Welcome back everyone. If you could please like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. So in today's video, we're going to explore how using different lenses affects the way that faces are recorded by our camera. So I'm gonna show you a test going from 35 to 135 millimeters when shooting a headshot, sort of in a driver's license sort of framing. Then as a special bonus at the end, we're gonna look and see how um, the lenses affect distortion when shooting a little looser and shooting a full body portrait. So before we get started, let's talk about the lighting on this very first look. So our model Christian is posing here for us and he's lit from the front with a Bowens 200 millimeter Fresnel lens attachment. Now, if you don't have one of these, you could simply use a grid reflector with maybe like a 10 degree grid. It'll give you roughly the same sort of hard light look that I was going for while shooting this film noir portrait. I was shooting at 1 200th of a second at F8 at ISO 100, and when I metered the light falling on his face uh, from the Bowens Fresnel, that's exactly uh, what it metered at. So ISO 100 and F8. Then I lit his hair from high and behind with an eight inch reflector uh, sort of boomed out there over the set, pointed down at about 45 degrees. And when I metered the light falling on the back of his head, it metered at F8. Then separating him from the background on his left side is a seven inch grid reflector. And that's sort of pointed over here at his ear just to sort of edge him out a little bit and separate him. And that light metered at F4 when I place the meter on the back of his neck. Then to light the background, which is sort of a classic element in these film noir portraits, um, sort of having a marbled looking background is something that you see a lot. I wanted to create a vignette by placing a light with a seven inch grid reflector very close to the background. And then that sort of created a radial highlight that fed, uh, that blended out to black at the edges. So I took my light and I turned it down all the way to about seven watt seconds. And I placed it fairly close to the background. And then I started shooting a series of test frames and turned it up so that I got exactly the look that I was going for. You may need to have to change, you may need to change the pitch a little bit to get the vignette in the right location and you may need to turn the power up or down in order to get the right sort of look. So for this, in this instance, that light, when I metered it right in the brightest portion of the backdrop, metered at F16. So now let's look at the results. And you pretty much can take this first one here as sort of a bonus. I was using a 35 millimeter lens in there as close as I could. And it was so close, in fact, that there was a shadow from the camera on his mouth. But you can tell that this image is not very pleasing at all. When I back the camera up and shot with a, the lens at 50 millimeters, I was using the Canon 28 to 70 F2 for the beginning of this test here. When I, when I backed up and zoomed into 50 millimeters, things got to be better, but you can tell that his nose looks a little crooked here. And now that will become more apparent when we look at the 70 millimeter image. So as you can see here in the 70 millimeter frame, his face is less distorted and his nose looks less crooked. So now as we go to 85 millimeters, you can tell that his face looks flatter and far more pleasing and not distorted in any way. And then going up to 100 millimeters, it sort of looks the same and 135 millimeters looks the same as well. So now if we put all six of those images on the screen, you can tell that there is a big difference between the lenses here going from left to right or from 35 to 135. Well, I should say there is a bigger difference between 35 and 85 than there is between 85 and 135. And that's why most of the time, just looking at these images, you can tell that an 85 millimeter is best. And that's why most of the time I'm gonna end up with that 85 millimeter lens for a portrait. Now in the past, I have shot with a 50 sort of for dramatic effect. And sometimes I've shot sort of a looser sort of waist up look with the 35. I'm not entirely sure that was the best choice, but I think with the next time I'm on set doing looks like that, I'm gonna be very careful and sort of look and see how those feel overall to make sure that I'm not creating any distortion. 
So before we move on to the full body images, I just wanted to say that if you enjoy learning from me in these videos, you probably would also like learning from me in person. And soon I'll be teaching workshops in New York, DC, Atlanta, Denver, LA, and right here at my studio in Chicago. So for more information, just go to johngress.com slash workshops. So now let's look at this full body seated portrait shot with a 50, a 70, and an 85 millimeter lens. You can tell here that in the 50, I had to have the camera a little bit higher, and that's because if I kept it low, I would end up with the backdrop there in the background. Now this model is six feet, two inches tall, or 1.87 meters, and that backdrop is sitting there at about 2.4 meters or eight feet uh, tall. So just keep that in mind as you look at the results. There is a little bit of distortion as well in this image, but it's not terribly pronounced. Now, looking at it full body, you can tell that with the 50 millimeter lens, his hair looks a little crazy, or the shape of his head looks a little off. But then as we go down here to 70 and 85 millimeters, we of course can have the camera lower, he looks more heroic, and there's less distortion overall. Anyway guys, I hope that made sense and helped. If you have any questions or comments, just leave those below. And as always, stay safe, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.